take a look at some leaders in the industry and what they're doing in digital marketing with all of this new technology available to achieve their marketing objectives and engage with consumers. The first one that I'd like to take a look at is Mercedes-Benz and their uh, Great American Tweet Race. Mercedes, with the agency Razorfish, used new technology and social media to really get to consumers, engage with an audience to launch one of their new vehicles. Let's take a look at the video. We know Twitter can fuel conversations about cars, but can it actually fuel them? Okay, and let's just this a little. Go. Welcome to the Mercedes-Benz Tweet Race, an actual race powered only by tweets and by the passion of its audience. The journey began on December 13, 2010, with an open call on Facebook. In 10 days, 2,000 drivers applied. Mercedes has ordinary people racing across the country while campaigning for support online. The world's first Twitter-fueled race. It's a real race. Once chosen, it was time for teams to mobilize their online communities, and they did, each in their own way. With the race fast approaching, a video was released of engineers testing a Twitter-controlled vehicle prototype. The video was followed by an interactive banner, allowing users to operate the vehicle using tweets. A heated debate quickly arose about the existence of the technology. The buzz intensified, and suddenly, the tweet race was viral. On February 2nd, 2011, four teams embarked on their journey, driving specially equipped Mercedes-Benz vehicles. With drivers on the road, the real action happened on Twitter, where supporters and racers generated an endless stream of content, photos, videos, and tweets. This fuel not only kept the cars moving, but also served as the glue that kept the community engaged and entertained. Meanwhile, team location and progress were chronicled in real time at mbtweetrace.com. And as the bond between supporters and racers grew, it created a wave that swept across the Twitter sphere and reached millions of people. One team even became a trending topic. The tweet race was about more than just cars and a finish line. It was about strangers in far-flung places, bound together by a hashtag, rallying for a common goal. In our second case, Burberry released a very cool piece of work called Burberry Kisses which allowed almost anyone to send a virtual kiss from their mobile phone to anyone in the world. Burberry Kisses is an interactive experience that showcases our love for one another, which can then be communicated in the most human way possible, a kiss. Behind every great campaign is a story of how the magic came together. Burberry, Google, and Grow go behind the scenes in this video in the creative process, explore the technology and multiple challenges that they face to create such an amazing piece of work. Enjoy the video. How do we bring the romantic British view of the Burberry brand and the feeling that you get when you walk into a Burberry store to the internet? Burberry is this 150-year-old brand that's got heritage beyond heritage. If millennials could just see how Burberry can introduce emotion into technology, they would fall in love with the brand. Together with Burberry, Google, and Grow, we really want to find something that was A, engaging, and B, very personal. Something that anyone can do, that you can do, your grandmother can do. What's more personal than a case? What if you could capture a kiss with a video camera and then you could send it to someone and have them receive it? What would that be like to get a kiss through the internet? It's sending. It's sending. Your kiss has been sent. Oh, very nice. So Burberry Kisses is actually a campaign to reimagine how Burberry would talk about their beauty products. It was very simple. You send a message to somebody you care about, sealed with your kiss. The obvious question was, can we do this? Can you capture that kiss? Whether people came in on a laptop, on a tablet, on their phone. He's hard. 
Okay, send a kiss to mommy, okay? We were trying different ways of getting that lip imprint looking just right. We tested, our friends <laughs> tested. We will, we will try to like use our hands or something. I even so. draw a face on, on my, I was like trying to make a kiss, but it didn't work, so. Yeah. Once you hit send, you get this beautiful interactive video, which is personalized and shows the journey of your kiss flying from the city where you are through the clouds across mountains and oceans. After we, we had this idea of like the personal one-to-one, -one, the me sending you a kiss, we built in the part about capturing all of the world's love. If we got enough people to use this experience, you could actually create a real-time map of people sharing love and messages of hope and beauty and fun in real time. A very, very special project that we've been working on with Google uh, called Burberry Kisses. It launches today. I can't wait to get your response. I think what was really exciting about the launch of Burberry Kisses was to watch all these people from Brazil sending and receiving kisses. At first, we said, what on earth is happening? And what we didn't realize, it was actually Brazilian Valentine's Day. While it was fundamentally a digital idea, Burberry featured it in its flagship store in London, but also put it in all the store windows across the United States. It had kisses.burberry.com right in the store window. I loved how many different audiences were talking about this, TechCrunch and Mashable and the like, and then Women's Wear Daily and Vogue and so on. It became pop culture. We saw such strong engagement rates with not only the ad units, but people interacting with the experience on the website. At no point would we imagine half the world would be sending kisses around to each other within a matter of a week. Kisses were being sent over 200 countries, reaching 13,000 cities across the world. People were spending over three minutes engaged with this creative experience. And this campaign has lived on, become more than a campaign, almost a platform, through the holiday season, through Valentine's Day. The challenge is like introduce something that somebody doesn't expect to be able to get online, like love, like romance, whatever that is that you just don't expect out of technology. I think that's when people really pay attention. What are some of the principles that we've looked at? There's one-to-one -one scaling, creating a real-time map around the world. It became pop culture. There was coverage in other media, over 200 countries and 13,000 cities, an average of 13 minutes of engagement. And it really was a platform because of all these things, not just a campaign. Finally, ConAgra Foods worked with advertising agencies, advertising partners, um, and measurement firm Comscore to transform its approach to online advertising, resulting in improved campaign performance and ROI. This is very important for clients and marketers. This case study looks at how the FMCG giant achieved a 70% lift in attribute awareness, so those things that people um, are aware of that are you know, actually parts of the product, uh, and a 30% lift in purchase intent, also very important, by fine-tuning its targeting and working closer with publishers. Take a look at the case and see where those things occurred. This is a huge return. What principles were involved in getting to these metrics? So in summary, take a look at those three cases. What were the commonalities with the three cases? They were all using new technology, had a very uh, firm understanding of their consumer or their user, and used those two things to create value. What drove their success? Was it the technology? Was it the way that they used that to uh, create insights and engage with consumers? What was it that drove the success? How did the brands use channels for their insights? What were those insights? And of course, there are always drawbacks. What were the drawbacks in each of these cases? We always have to consider that.